YouTube, what's up? Well, it's been a minute, of course, but, well, cars come, but time is short. <laughs> time is very short. But we have time now, and we're going to use that time. We're going to look at cars, because that's, uh, that's what we all need in life. So we're going to start with M2. We got some cars, and actually I had one last video I never got to. Good thing I didn't mention them in the beginning, because <laughs> I never got to them. But we're going to look at some good stuff. Uh, we have M2, Johnny Lightning, Greenlight, Shuko, Auto World, and, uh, oh, and we got some Chinese brands. So we're going to get our hands on those. We're going to do a little, little look-see at that, too. So hopefully we'll get some content down. Um, but, yeah, let's take a look. This is a casting that I missed. It was in the deluxe boxes. It came out turquoise. Well, I got the cinnamon color, brown color. This is the 41 Willy Gasser Coupe um, that M2 does. It's a pretty decent casting, actually. Uh, it's a Gasser car. We'll take a look. So, raked. That was the belief back then. Weight transfer. They kind of... Wanted the traction on the back. This is during the time when they also started to alter the wheelbase of the cars too. They did the alter wheelbase, uh, you know, the precursor of the funny cars, things like that. Well, a lot of times they take this vehicle, gasser, put a lighter front end on it, suspension, maybe simplify it a little bit, raise it up in there, send some of the weight to the back. Still going to be a front engine car, but they wanted to put weight back. So, this is a Willys. So, this is an American vehicle. The company also had Jeep at the time. One and the same. But, they were light cars. I think they were four-cylinder economy vehicles. They looked like the bigger cars of the day. Like the Ford, you might be looking at that car. It looks like a Ford 40 Coupe. But, it was on a smaller scale. If you look at a Willys in person, they're, they're pretty tiny. But, they had attributes where, you know, if you strengthen the frame a little bit, did some engine mounts, you could probably put that big engine, and they did. So these cars were quite competitive back in the day. Other cars took over after it, but they're still a very, very popular vehicle to use. I think there's more wheelies set up as drag cars than there are probably normal ones at this point, <laughs> or stock ones. It's heavy flake paint, typical of M2, but the casting is good. And I think these newer tires, maybe the, out the past few years, these pie crust slicks, the old school slick, that looks really good. So I do like that. And I don't remember if the hood goes or not. No, it does not. The ladder bars that are set up, traction bars, whatever you want to call them, those look really cool. The headers look really good. Rolls nicely. So... Sometimes you can make out with this, um, the more premium releases. Cars seem to be okay. I like the way the wheels look. I mean, it's a nice looking vehicle. <coughs> so I'm glad to have it. I'm not going to go nuts with these cars. I'm not going to get every one, but if they see some good graphics, I might pick a couple up. They'll look good with the drag layout. So, one of 9600 seems to be the case. With a lot of those releases now. I haven't seen anything over 10,000 yet. That I've seen anyway. We'll put it on the gravel. And today you can see today's car background selection. If you want to look. If you're curious to get a little look-see. We always try to change it up a little bit. So there's some cars we're going to get to here in a minute. Alright. I'm going to put this box down. We'll move right along. Another M2 car. Actually, if you see this, I'm going to maybe change that to the background back there. But anyway, this was a recent release. 69 Roadrunner, so it's a Plymouth car. Hemi, so Roadrunner car really on a satellite vehicle. It looks like Plymouth satellite, but Roadrunner was kind of like, hey, we're going to take a car, strip it, make it like a police special, you know, rubber floor, whatever, bench seat. And you can get the car, and what's going to do this car is it's going to be a cheap car, but it's going to have our best 
drive trains that we offer. So that was kind of Roadrunner deal. You know, it's the same thing with the counterpart Dodge Super B, which was based on Coronet at the time frame. So 68, 69, 70, 71 Coronet and Satellite Roadrunner were really good bargains. Now, I was on a bigger car. You know, they call it intermediate. It wasn't as big as a C-platform Mopar car with full size, you know, stuff like the New Yorker and uh, Imperial, things like that. But this was still a big car, but it was fairly light for the competition. And again, you can get any engine you want. Now, Roadrunner, you're going to be typically 383, 440, and the 426. And this car is supposed to be a 426 car. In 69, you know, before insurance got bonkers with the cars, really kind of helped tame down the horsepower. Gas prices a little bit, but it was more the cost to run one of these vehicles. Got a little high, so the manufacturers backed off. But they still, people like the cars. But you can get this car pretty cheap because, look, I mean, they didn't do any real serious stuff with the wheels and tires. They put the, which I haven't changed yet. I did run, <laughs> I found some green light tires, actually. I just remembered I did this. So it has those puny, um, and they're red lines, so, I mean, they looked good. But they had this, and I didn't like the way that looked. So I just flipped them out. So who knows if I'll keep that. It's a decent-looking vehicle. Thick paint, but it's one of their full feature early castings, and it's held up pretty well. Now, a lot of people argue with M2 the fact that really the 164 scale that they claim to be is not completely accurate. I can understand that, but you know, a lot of the other cars aren't so good either. I mean, there's some of we course that we know they're pretty darn dead on. But if we stray a little bit into the Johnny Lightning and the Racing Champion and the M2 and maybe some of those green lights, they all have their issues. But the car itself is really, really well done. You could see that 426 Hemi look nice. So this car is a bucket seat console car. So, you know, you could get the car stripped down and get that low price tag. You can get this car in the high twos, low threes. So, I mean, two, three thousand dollar car, maybe a little bit into the mid threes. You know, once you start putting the bigger <laughs> engines in it, you could pick the correct rear end. You know, if you want to get a real nice steep rear end, pause traction, dual, you know, the whole thing. Now, it came as a package on Roadrunner. You can go up the levels. So, a lot of stuff was already ordered for you, but you could still spend a lot more and of course when you buy the car you do the quote-unquote day two serious stuff so buy the car and then you get also some additional goodies to put in the vehicle that you can't get from chrysler or you go to the chrysler parts department you know because chrysler also sell performance parts so there's the rear i like this car because it is so simple and it does have that basic look even though it's got a big motor Always like Chrysler Steelys. The thing about M2 is they did the Steelys, and basically they are the Chrysler ones, even though they'll throw them on Fords and, and Chevys. But they look the most at home here. They're going to need to be brought out a little bit with the ink, so we'll put some silver out to the edges there and get those little ridges done. But it's a cool car. We'll put it back by the garage. Let's move on. I don't think we've looked at too many road runners, so I spent a little extra time on that one. One eighty four hundred, release sixty two. This was a wide release, not one of those Walmart exclusives or anything like that. So cool looking car. All right, put this back over here, and that's gonna go by the M two boxes that seem to pile up. Probably take up the least amount of space. Excuse me. Sometimes dust is around or something like that. Okay. <laughs> Let's look at, uh, well, which one do I have? Let's look at some green light. We'll get through the green light and then we'll get to the Alderworld Johnny Lightning. 
So this is Series 7 of State Wagons. Fan of the State Wagon Series, but as they stretch out the series and they don't have enough tooling, sometimes it'll have a little bit of a spike of activity and then kind of a few releases that'll kind of just do color schemes but still do the same, you know, 5 to 10 castings. You know, that, that sometimes can happen. I mean, if you put yourself into a, a little bit of a box by saying this has to be a series of station wagons, you know, they could probably maybe issue one to two station wagons a year or maybe once every two years the new tooling just depends on what you want to do now they introduced the grand le mans and the le mans safari wagon too right we like that the ltds and the country squires colony parks we got those cars so we're, we're growing you know we could only imagine what's next i i could see that the you know the general motors cars the g wagons the g body wagons the uh, you know, talking about Buick Skylark, uh, Malibu wagon, that kind of thing. Talking about that 78, 79, 81 to about 84, those type of cars. And then we have the Fox based LTD Ford from 79 forward. So that car is really cool. And they made a really cool wagon. So I, I'm thinking that, you know, Greenlight likes the 80s stuff. That'll probably come pretty shortly. I'm sure they'll do a, a G-Body. Uh, yeah, so they've done the Monte Carlo. They'll probably do the rest. All right. It's cool because they did basically a 442 Olds tribute car because Olds never did 442 wagon from the factory. But if you did the option sheet, Especially in the late 60s, early 70s, you could put the 455 in the car. You could put the heavy-duty three-speed automatic, etc. And the car could be a pretty good performer. Of course, we see the hallmark of the old wagon as we have the extended wheelbase, which made the car a lot roomier than a regular four-door. Non-opening hood on green light, but they do the tailgate. Now, this is the blue and white. So again, a color combination not too common in real life on the 442. It would have been kind of cool to do this car, which they've done, the Hearst Special for Indianapolis. Um, hobby exclusive, but Indianapolis 500 track exclusive cars that we've seen earlier. Might be nice to do this one in those colors without the Indy graphics. So 72 cars, just about to change to the Colonnades in 73. So this is really the last year for this body now i think this body is basically a 68 69 type of body with with updates every year and you can see the profile of course general motors was very good at selling the same car over and over again in different divisions this was the wagons since there was a lot of unique features had to be cost shared with the other brands especially the glass doors windshield that kind of thing. So you'll see a lot of commonalities between Buick, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, Chevrolet, things like that. So cool car. I think it had the hitch, but I took it off. I think it looks cleaner like this. It also had, I think, um, BFGs, and I didn't like the way that looked. So we took those off, and we put some black walls. And we also detailed the rims because the rims weren't, uh, the black wasn't in there. It looked kind of funny. So we did that. But other than those tiny touch-ups, the car makes it out pretty well. And again, this is Greenlight's, one of their better castings. I would say everybody, if you like wagons, get one of these. They're easy to find. They even do the detail with a separate license plate in the bumper. So there's some cool touches See the separate license plate, and then the action on the tailgate on all of them I've ever had is really, really good. So they designed that well for mass production duties, and it always seems to do really good. So here we go, Oldsmobile. When we talked about that car, when that casting came out, we did a video on the channel. And go ahead and take a look. All right. Do we have more green light? I think we do. Yeah. <laughs> so, this is a casting I've been reluctant to get, but fortunately, it fell into the NYPD, which I like collecting those vehicles. So, 
I saw this and I took it. So this is Series 40. We're up to Series 40, Hot Pursuit, everybody's favorite. This is a 19 Durango uh, Pursuit truck. And this is still when Dodge, uh, the police department uh, vehicles, their, their special service vehicles are a fleet Durango. Still mimicked what the street one looked like. I think they put the grill. I think they did the grill. Maybe had the column shifter, but a lot of the stuff, like they still had alloy wheels, kind of, it still looked very civilian. So hopefully, what I'm alluding to is, I'm just looking at the back. If you want to look at the back, hold on. Let me interrupt myself. So those are the other vehicles, just in case you need that. Okay. So they finally committed to like a real full, quote-unquote, police package. The truck has its own uh pressed steel wheels that are gloss black looks very good it has a chrome center cap so it looks like the charger equivalent now all the other police features remain you know the long service life uh coolers everything like that uh so it looks a little bit more like a police vehicle this one's a 19 so it's got the alloys this is my first durango casting for um green light you can see the all the cutting fluid that's in that that's what I'm going to call it because that's basically what it feels like. It feels like air tool oil. Very clear kind of film. So, yeah, it's caked in there. Now, I've experimented by not drilling the vehicles apart and just kind of running it under the sink. Like with some hot water, maybe a little soap, and just kind of let it get in there for a little, little bit. But that takes a while. But sometimes it will uh, clear that out. So, if you're discouraged... And you don't want to drill your car out, try that. You know, it's running these cars under a little bit of soap and water is not going to do anything to them. They'll be perfectly fine. Shake them like this, kind of get the water out as much as you can, and just put them on a towel, and they'll dry overnight or for a few hours, and they'll be fine. You don't want to keep doing it every day. You know, that'll rust them out. But doing it once, you know, even twice, is not going to be a bad thing. So a lot of these will have the six cylinder in them. You can probably get the eight cylinder in two. I believe they have the six as an option. You know, the 3.6 liter V6 from Chrysler is actually pretty strong. And that V6 has way more horsepower than plenty of the old school V8 ones. So it's a plenty fine engine for what needs to be done. And it's more cost effective. I mean, there's so many millions of those engines around. So looks like 90th precinct interesting so the nypd has all the vehicles i'm, I'm sure if you, anything that you can think of that's relatively domestic uh, they probably have in their fleet you know from fusions to toyota prius to camry hybrid to uh, ford fusion hybrid durango explorer you know impala they just got everything you know even they have little cushman scooters and three-wheeled harley davidsons oh they got everything all right now, we go around a green light. No, we're gonna look at one more. So this is a wide release. You can find these cars. This is a Hollywood series, so they're pushing them in Target. They're pushing them in Walmart. History Channel car, counting cars, kind of a funny show if you ever seen it. So this is a '72 Monte Carlo. It's on better wheels. The first one I had had the enormous uh, Chevy rallies that used to come on the Corvette. You know the the, the C3 vets that green light did those huge fat tires well they put a more modern wheel on this but this sucker is jacked up really high so i mean the body is superb it's one of the best uh first gen monte carlo castings believe it or not it's just the way the car sits now this car had some height to it when it was when it was brand new when this you know the springs are brand new in 1970 <laughs> you know the cars did sit up pretty good but they i mean this is a little excessive but I haven't done anything yet because I think maybe just a fatter tire would uh, settle things out for the eyes. I don't think I have to do any major surgery. But it's got a really good paint color. Now, I got the first one. It was kind of that dark green, kind of funny. But this one looks much more appropriate. So, with the gold and the black. So, this is a very pretty car. And Greenlight did a great job with it. The casting is probably licensed can't remember yeah 2019 so yeah it's relatively new we didn't look at all the serial numbers on these cars but 
I, I remember looking at them, and if I missed anything, it wasn't anything important in terms of being, you know, a really good serial number. <laughs> now this one, you're looking at this, trying to see. I don't know if I see it, so. Here's the etch them in. So there's our tail lights. So green light kind of divides it, which kind of ruins the look of them, because they're really supposed to be one piece going down the horizontally or uh, vertically like that so but that's kind of under magnification rolls dice it's a good looking car so my car was that luxury coupe you know a lot of the cars are doing it and they kind of brought it down to the chevy line a little bit more personally like the car is still huge but you know but if you wanted a car high horsepower it'd be really the impala the bel air the caprice they had two doors of those cars but that car is their full size. And so Monte Carlo kind of wanted to be between, you know, the Camaro and all that kind of stuff. And those bigger cars, but still have a coupe, kind of like a fun car, like a Thunderbird was doing well. The Lincoln Coupe, the Caddies. There, there was a lot of demand for a car like that. Big horsepower, but a little bit more upscale. So Chevy did this car. It was a pretty good success, and it had a good look to it, so cool car i don't think yeah here we go hood opens that's good so we got that you know you typically on the introduction year you're going to see big block power on this car 400 450 uh 454 yeah yeah 70s 454 so 400 454 that kind of stuff 427 whatever there you go bam all right I don't even think that car had stick shift. I don't think they did stick shift in Monte Carlo in 1970. But I could be wrong. All right, here we go. So, let's see. Do we have any other green light? Well, we got one more, but that's kind of a big one. So, let's move. Let's move, let's move over to Johnny Lightning before we get to Auto World. So... When I found these Auto Worlds and the Giant Lightnings, I went to a grocery store. I believe it was Meyer. I can't remember. It might have been Walmart. But anyway, they had the Giant Lightning and the Auto World out. They had a case out. Finally, I saw the whole case. I didn't miss it. No Ultra Reds, anything like that. I was just grateful to see something on the shelf where I didn't have to pay a, a markup online. Let's just put it that way. So I found a very popular casting that's been circulating, especially on Instagram. So <laughs> I don't know how long. I, I almost bought the introductory model that Ottawa was doing, the Ford Motorcraft service truck, you know, that kind of thing. It was kind of like a low production. I was like, maybe I'll spend the 12 bucks, maybe not. Well, I found one on the shelf. Not the best color. It's the baby blue. So not my favorite. I think the other one of this is yellow or the green one. I can't remember which. But these are going to be around, so I'm not too worried. It's still going to be 12,000 of these, and I'll find them. I typically find the Johnny Lightnings much easier than the Auto Worlds. At least finding, you know, something in the set. And this is the rest. And I also found the other one that I really wanted. So, actually, they had the full case of this out and the full other, the, basically, the Auto World, the same time will look. So, we finally pretty much completed that set. So the El Camino I did want, but you know I only could spend so much money. I've seen the ADL uh, Monte Carlo. Now that's a new casting, but they casted that Monte Carlo like the old Johnny Lightning stuff, like kind of at a scale. So I didn't really. I mean, it's nice, but I couldn't get it. So and of course the the thirteen ZL one. I don't even know why they did that car when they have such a much better casting at Auto World. Here it is. So. I didn't touch this car even though it really pained me not to because you can see it's a mess. Um, but I've seen other ones, you know, online and whatever. They're fine. I think this one just got the dropped on the floor treatment. But so anyway, it's this baby blue. So I, I might just do a custom with this actually because I really don't like the color. But I got to look at the casting. Now, it's hidden a little bit under this extremely thick paint job. But... It, what I kind of like about most of the Johnny, the new Johnny Lightning stuff is they always have the accurate wheel covers because they can cast the wheel like a hubcap, quote unquote, 
in much better detail because it's a flat piece of plastic. So they can make the four rims and, and, and they can actually spend the money on actually doing the rims that might only be on this casting or, you know, if they do a Bronco two, you know, they can use that as well, but they can do it. So, you know, we have the little, um, Mazda, you know, they're not going to use that rim on anything else, but they're able to cast it because it's too pretty. So, and I also like the way they roll because they, the axle's pinched, but they let the wheel roll through the axle. So it has the roll quality of like a Hot Wheels Premium. And they've been doing dynamite work. So this is a great car. I mean, we looked at this before. I'm looking forward to the others. Trying to get the white one at a reasonable price. I'm also trying to find the gold one that's coming out. So hopefully we'll see more RX-7 soon. But So this is a Ranger. They had a V6, and they also had a four-cylinder on these trucks. This is really Ford's first in-house small pickup truck, you know, that wasn't designed in conjunction completely with Mazda, Zuzu, whatever they were dealing with. I think it was Mazda mostly. So the Ford Ford Courier, that truck borrowed a lot of stuff from, um, you know, their counterparts overseas, even though Ford may have produced them here and stuff like that. But this Ranger is really a, a United States kind of invention even though it might have been exported. And it led to three vehicles, not only the Ranger, but it also did the Bronco 2, which was the base Ranger, and also, of course, the Ford Explorer that everybody <laughs> loves so much. But this is the genesis of that project. Now, this one's supposed to be in 1984, and I think that car, this truck was around then, 82, 83, 84, something like that. And... It it did really well, but it had a lot of trucks out already. So the 80s and the 70s really had a bunch of mini trucks. So Ford, General Motors finally got into the game. Of course, we looked at S10 from Greenlight, and they're very similar vehicles, but do we see a similar scale? Close, but the S10 looks smaller. So I thought that was kind of interesting. A little skinnier. Close. You know, it's almost like I'm walking back in time. Walk down the street, and this is all there was. <laughs> See these cards. It's funny. I'm, I'm guessing because you know it's cyclical or it's generational. I mean, I guess when I was little, I was reflecting on this. You know, you'd see cars that you'd want as a model car or a diecast car, but obviously there was nothing. There was always like fifty-seven Chevys and you know nineteen-eighties Ferraris, things like that. So everything that was probably because the people that could afford. Those cars were from that time frame. So now, if you're looking at this, you know, you're know probably from a certain time frame. <laughs> and you're looking at these vehicles, and these are like our 57 Chevys and things like that. So, And the people that run these companies are basically this age group, you know, the middle age, the early to late, you know, that's kind of like that big hump there, that are into these die casts. I mean... I've always liked it. I was always it wasn't anything new for me. So, but I'm just reflecting on the times we're in. We're seeing a lot of variety, and I think that's because of the reason. So the next car we're gonna look at. I, I took the wheels off, but I'll show you why. So this poor sucker, which is an awesome vehicle. We'll put the tires on in a minute, but just ignore that for a second and look at it. So a great, great casting. It is a Johnny Lightning, I believe. It's not a Racing Champions. But this is used from Ertl. Would, it would basically have this casting, and they'd put it a lot with their tractors, which we've seen my original old-school red one. We've compared that earlier. But this is that Midas edition, which it talks about, if you just want to screenshot this real quick, you know, what it was and everything. Very rare. Um, but just, you know, let's... Uh, <laughs> let's let's put a bunch of crap on this truck and you know slap a mark up on it and there you go so that that's kind of what that was but it's cool and they were jumping on the bandwagon to be fair they all had their straight packages that you could do back then especially with the trucks and the vans and the pickups this is just kind of what you did now they're using the kind of the jeep uh alloy that they put on the grand wagoneer in the Cherokee but it works here so it looks good 
So what happened with this is they're using their newer updated tire, it looks like. So this is a great looking tire. Let's take a look at it real quick. It's not bad, but in this application, it doesn't fit. Uh, the front rolls, now we have axle that's centered in there. This not so centered. So let's put this on here without completely... These tires are a little stiff because they use a newer style vinyl, feels like. So it's a little stiff. So looks like it got in there. So it will rub. It's a little too forward for the size of this tire. So I figured I'd get it on the video here so everybody can look at it and make your own conclusion. A lot of people doesn't really matter i guess but they just have it like that that's fine but this is going to be functional vehicle so what we're going to do is do the old we're going to drill this sucker out we're going to take the axle off and we're going to build a, a suspension <laughs> basically and these tires won't be so sucked in like that like a like a train like a railroad car and we'll this will look very good but i'm going to use these wheels and tires they look great so that's coming up hopefully i get to that soon but you know I restrained myself. I also restrained myself on fixing this up just to show everybody what's coming on out of the package. Because uh, a lot of times I'll just be like, bam, here, I did all this stuff to the car. But <laughs> uh, What do you think? But this is what sometimes you got to deal with. Now, that's if you're a big opener like me. And, you know, sometimes you can pick and choose which cars want to be, like, untouched and which ones you can basically blow apart and do whatever you want so that's always a personal choice of course but it's a great vehicle so it definitely deserves to have the right stance and the right tire wheel you know offset and all that so we're going to get that handled now we're going to move on to auto world and when we do that we'll we'll see some adjustments <laughs> that i've done okay so really cool johnny lightning stuff um some of their better things even if the scout's not a perfect 164 it's close it's it's close enough for me i'm not going to nitpick so off the shelf truck not a hobby exclusive this is auto world 2022 release one which we're getting 2022 release one into sixth seventh eighth month of the year so they're way behind but that's all right whatever everybody's way behind i guess so this is one of 17406 so they're really ratcheting up the production. They're like, screw it, we'll just... You know, if that boat stays out there for four months and then you finally get the thing eight months late, whatever, we're sending them to you anyway. So this is the 86 truck. And, yeah, I mean, 87 is going to be last year for this bad boy, so we're going to have to move on to 88s, the OBS trucks, hopefully. But almost. Um, 87s are out, I believe. They're going to be like two-tone fleet side trucks. So, you know, they went with the step side bed to show it off again. And there's the collection, of course, to current and previous, right? All right. So I did get the color I kind of wanted first. It is white. They do the red, same vehicle. So this one had the terrible offset, you know, the whole thing. This actually had bed warpage, too. So this was doing the crooked bed. You can probably still see a little bit of that, but it's not as bad, but... What also kind of ruins the way your eye flows on this vehicle is this big big dab of uh, paint right there that kind of curves the bed up so kind of throws the eye off but I got it pretty straight they do rivet these beds to the cab and then they'll do that so that was an improvement so that was a casting upgrade that I've seen on the more recent trucks, especially the lifted ones, is they'll put the third rivet there. The earlier stuff was just one here, one there. They'd rivet the bed together. So I took it apart. I had to. And I also put spacers in and I put my brass axles on. So now this truck rolls perfect. And it's got the offset on the tires the way it needs to be. So this is a lifted truck with the fat base so this base you know a lot of people kind of bring up the fact that this in particular is a problem area i mean look how much metal that is and we know how nicely m2 was able to be done when we look at that just as a reference you know i mean look at that that's cool we got separate leaf springs we got the drive shaft the whole nine yards basically similar price point 
Of course, people hate this because they think it's too big. I understand. But, but anyway, so we'll look at some success of trucks. So, and we'll see what think what your opinion would be. Same bucket seat interior still have not produced a bench seat interior. I think that would help them if they change that, but they're very reticent to do it. So they don't they just keep throwing the same interior in all the trucks, even though it doesn't completely line up with the year-to-year -year changes. So it's the bed, and then just like Ford, when they were doing step sides in the 80s, you know, it was basically a design that went way back, way, way back in, in the, the years, and the Chevy was no different. I mean, that tailgate's old as hell. But it looked good. <laughs> Not really high. That's kind of funny. All right. And, of course, we got our Chevy V8 in there. Hopefully, it's more than a 305. Hopefully, they do the 350. But, you know, the 305 to the 350, a little bit more power. But I think the price, I mean, for the difference, I think it held a lot of people back. Because most of the trucks are 305 trucks. Especially short beds, very few are 350s, but I mean, you could do it, but it was probably seldomly done. Unless the truck was pulling, or you know, had the 8 foot bed, things like that. So there's our grill there. It's good looking, I mean, I like the way this casting looks. Now the white height, you know, shows everything on the casting, a lot of ghosting. So, almost would be nice to respray it white. And, and not have all that going on, but I'd say this truck's a good five footer. You know, we'll put it that way and it rolls so good. All right, next, let's do another uh, Auto World. So these are my, so we're going to do these both at the same time. So I saw these at the farm trucks. There's a guy, I don't know, he has die, he's weird. It's a, the, it's a U haul, but he's got it farm. Farm toys, too, so I guess, you know, that's great. So I went in there one time because I saw it online a long time ago, and he still does it. So I went in there on a, on a trip and uh, saw these. Now, they're marked up a little bit, not too bad, and I guess I said, you know, I'll break even and basically saving shipping. So I did it. I had to get something, you know. Some of the stuff in there is actually not bad. But anyway, these are online right now. A lot of people do the farm side of the 164 stuff, so maybe a lot of you already know about these. But B&B &B Farm Toys, they're kind of a, you know, like a Miho and a whatever, that do their own kind of thing based off existing company casting. going to do their own specialized production run. Well, this car, these are both one of 2520, and we're going to both end of the spectrum. So we've got an 83 truck and a 73 truck released at the same time. And they actually had some really good... Um, colors. The last colors were too crazy. They were John Deere green and it was uh, some other wild color. Didn't look good. It looked like a custom paint job that someone kind of found at the Napa Clearance Center and so I didn't like that one. But this one these look cool. So this is a black and gold and then a golden red. And the red is sweet. It's like a poppy red. Um, it is sweet trucks. So I did these trucks too. Same way, we put our shims on the axles, re-axled them, cleaned up the rubber, you know, took all the flashing off the rubber, etc. So, one was the red 83. You can see that price. I mean, you should be paying about 15, so I didn't get too crazy about it, but about 15, 14 bucks for these trucks, maybe a little bit less. But they're very exclusive, and I did open them. Because they were really cool. So these have definitely done pocket duty. Already. They're sweet. I haven't found a really good place to take a picture of them yet. Although if you head on down to Mig's Instagram. You'll see some recent of these things that we're looking at now. You'll see there. So they do some cool stuff. They basically work a lot with green light too. And they'll do like you know. Uh, fifth wheel flatbed like sets with the with the eight foot bed trucks and everything like that so we'll take a look here just really really nice clean graphics this is probably going to be pretty sought after vehicle just a really cool looking one but there's a lot to choose from you can actually say you pick and choose what kind of special edition if you're a square body guy like me like i just like to try i mean i don't necessarily need to have one in real life but 
uh, I like the trucks as a model, you know, and if I was to get an old truck, I'd probably get one of these, but it's not in the cards right now. I don't need uh, all that extra uh, vehicles right now, <laughs> but cool truck. Just love the way they look, especially as a, as a die cast. Um, so I'm a truck guy, I like looking at trucks, good stuff. So really cool gold. It's like a matte gold. It, it's like a 60s gold car. So it's got that old school gold in it. And then I did my shims. You can see how fat they have to get in the front, you know, because how narrow they made that gauge. I don't know why they did that, but they just did it. But now we have the wheels and tires sticking out just oh so perfectly. And this will have the, should have the orange block. So just a cool truck. And the 73 grill on these, just superb. Cheyenne 10, so Cheyenne being a little bit of a gussied up fancy. And then we got the 83 with the good grill. That looks really nice. We got the B&B &B Toys plate. And this is a sweet truck too. You know, this looks like one of them ones you got. You know, just kind of did a little quick resto on it. Kind of painted it up. Got the stuff out of catalog. Put that trim back on it. You know how it goes. <laughs> got the black block on this one. And of course we got this nice dark, dark brown or red interior. So it's just a really sweet truck. They picked out some really great colors. And highly recommend them if they're still out there. Buy it. That's a buy from Migs. I definitely I mean it's nice to have something different than the ones you have to beat the scalpers too at the store. I'll pay more for them, but they're you know, not everybody has them either, so I like them. All right, we looked at some trucks. Let's look at a, what do we got here? Let's look at a tank. <laughs> Where's this tank at? Uh, where is, I thought I had the card for it, but. Oh, down here? Yeah. Here it is. 1944 M4 Sherman. So this Sherman I was comparing, I was like, what's the difference? I didn't really know there was a huge difference. I'm sure they updated it. But the big big thing from this, from the Korean one, Korean War one, was the, the barrel, the main gun, was different. So here's the black one. And it was just really cool, like a, like a flat black tank. I thought that was kind of neat, so... I might take off the black bandit stuff and just leave it be. But it's a sweet old girl. And of course it really doesn't not meant to roll whatsoever. It's just kinda it, it <laughs> it'll function. How about we put that? So tracks tracks will function, but they're they're not gonna do too good. Now, this one I spent a lot of time and tried to get it as good as I could. And I got it much more functional, but they're not, like, it's not going to roll. I mean, you might do it on a heavy carpet, but, but at least that you can do this while you're looking at it, and it'll function. <laughs> so this one, you can see, look at that gun. Um, and then I'm sure our tank people, if you're watching this, can chime in on them a little bit. But just comparing to castings, very little difference, you know, besides just putting a different piece of plastic on the front the two guns are are different so that's kind of yeah maybe they're not let me look at them no nope, they're the same and the front gun's the same i guess the green gives a little bit more detail you can look at it let's take a look here compare these old battle battle tanks See if it'll... Yeah, so there's that one. Anyway, we looked at this. It looks like it focuses on the black mod easier. And you get a good look at the casting. It's like putting primer on something. You get a real good look at all the good details that they molded in. And we're looking at this. It's very cleanly done. So it's just a cool model. Of course, you can see the Black Bandit Ghost graphics right there. So... I don't know. I think it was neat and it looked good next to the other one. So we got that. And 
Going with the military theme, we'll take a little break from regular street vehicles. Let's take a look at some Hummers. All right, park this old girl back and put our Tiger tank over here. I'm gonna park the tank over by the Ranger. I think that Ranger needs to be ran over by that tank. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's uh, let's get some space with the trucks. I guess we can do that for now. Even though it's obscuring some things. These are cool. So these are, they're expensive. I mean, even if you get them at the stores where they carry them, you're not paying the markup. They're still going to be seven to nine bucks. So, I mean, but this is going back into Johnny Lightning um, casting cat, uh, catalog. And their military Humvee is really good, good casting. So we'll take a look at it. And, they gussied it up basically, so they've added. So you know the way they originally had the metal part of the casting, it was done as the shell of the Humvee, and then like the doors and the top can be done with plastic because they had you know just like the real vehicle, the metal part was there on the early Humvees, and then you could do the different tops, different door arrangements, and things like that. So this is that kind of the first gen so we're going to look at this i think i just showed you kosovo and this is the iraqi version so this will have the desert camo um some stuff there i guess i can't really but anyway it's basically old school hummer first gen style uh and then the up armored first gen up armored because like i think they kept doing a couple more after this that looked a little different but so this one's the Iraqi one, and then this one is the Kosovo um, mission, military police one. So they're really close to 164 scale. Now the Hummer the H1, it's not huge. I mean, it's a big car, but it's not enormous. So, I mean, it, it kind of looks relatively in place with the other 164 scale stuff I have around it. Actually, I was getting gas, and there was a rotation you know those guys were running the guard was running a bunch of them and and you know getting gas and stuff and they're pulled up and i was looking at them you know seeing the original h1 hummer it's still in use but seeing the size of them i mean they have a low profile and that's actually to their benefit i'm sure you know light command vehicle light light vehicle like that you're, you're going to want to be <laughs> have a low profile but yeah i mean you can look over the roof almost on it and, uh, you know, in case it doesn't have a big box or anything, but they're not huge cars, but they're pretty maneuverable. They're not that enormously fast, obviously, you know, their, their mission is not completely being very fast. 50 miles an hour, I guess, uh, 60, I think as they added weight, um, they got it considerably slower and then they had a, I think they eventually did some engine modifications if i'm not mistaken but what it originally started out with really was uh, a vehicle that was kind of uh interchangeable with certain missions so you could have this but the chassis would have been kind of the the main structure of the vehicle would be under this hood which flipped out this was actually composite i think it was aluminum so anyway so they'd have the bonded aluminum it was almost like monocoque construction this all would have been there. And then underneath the vehicle, what made it kind of new age was they had the drivetrain and the exhaust. Everything was tucked up under here. All ground clearance. It had the independent front and rear suspension. It actually made it better mobility because we had independent articulation now. Locking, I believe. And porthole axles i believe too so you'd have that just allowed the gearing down I'm pretty sure it had portals and they had big cvt joints really really cool stuff like that from one i remember learning about it back in the 80s i mean this car came out probably concept it's concepted it in the 70s kind of ramped up in the 80s but you know in the 80s these were out uh am general uh 
was the was the ones to do this and they had the contract you know with the six by six trucks all that kind of stuff so this is in their purview to create the light the next one to take place over the jeeps because military is kind of in between jeeps and using <laughs> pickup trucks basically pickup trucks and blazers and broncos things like that ram chargers as their vehicles to get around so this one's got the fording capability upgraded we have the stack and we have the raised air filter no moving parts on this but we see that Johnny Lightning was tooling new accessories so this is all kinda of plastic stuff you gotta be careful with it there's a better look at the chassis this is very similar to the Hot Wheels 100% Hot Wheels premium line late 90's early 2000's it's a very very similar casting uh, this has a little bit more plastic, I think, but very similar. I, I'm about to get one, trying to get one into the collection. I think I want that and the Toyota Baja vehicle, but that's very hard to get at a good price. <laughs> that's unless you don't get the original Toyota livery. So just a really cool looking truck with the, you know, the, the Greenland camo. And then we have this one with really cool features. So it's got the flag or... I don't know if this was a flag or a piece of metal. I can't rem I don't know exactly what that is, but I do know when I was reading that these are grenade launcher smoke launchers, so that's kind of cool. They all go off in all four directions and they made the turret uh movable. So the the fact that they're able to combine the metal and having plastic it gives that high fidelity. So there's a lot of detail on this vehicle. The windshields are the same, I think, on both. No, see, a little bit different. Maybe the same. And they roll very well. Wheels are good. Tires are kind of cool because they're unique to this. They don't really use these tires on anything that I've seen. Maybe they use it on the bigger trucks or something. So it's got the armored windows and the armored cab. It's got the rear uh, spare tire carrier. It's got the antenna base right there. It's a cool truck. Really cool. Because basically this whole piece and the doors, they're all different. So they, you know, Johnny Lightning's allowed to change that around. So I thought these were great. I'm glad I found them. They're very popular, you know, in any of the regular kind of vehicles like the jeep and like the dodge command car and stuff that you might have seen on the back those go pretty quick especially the hummers and these are well worth the money so i mean they're i get it they're about eight nine bucks ten bucks but they're cool so i was happy to find these and let's go go further so oh and i'm about to say original drive trade i mean it was stout but it was kind of anemic it was a 6.5 gm turbo diesel v8 with a turbo hydromatic transmission. I don't think the thing was a three speed still, but it might have been a four speed, but just simple stuff like that, you know, get it down the road. But there was some issues. There's some teething problems, I believe. But they did pretty good. Alright. Now we're gonna get into the premium stuff to round it out. More premium high 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 dollar stuff. <laughs> That's what we call it. Look at this Shuko. So, I have the yellow M3, my favorite generation M3, is this one. Here she is. And I had the different wheels. So, the other one's on the shelf, but we looked at the other one kind of recently. Superb casting, but it has fitment issues with their backspacing. So, like the rear wheels, so the ride height's good, because it did have that kind of tucked in look back there. But it rubs a little bit. I got it mostly to roll fine. It's got just a little rub. So that's not perfect, but the casting's good. And I'm glad to have it because I do like the blue version of the car. And I like Shuko's attention to detail. They got a little bit of a mini GT vibe going on with those headlights. And solid metal mirrors, so we don't have to worry about those falling off. Of course, they did a great job on the wheels, even though the BMW round dull. Is a little bit off. A little off on that too. But I believe I heard read some of these are kind of more hand handmade 
a little bit more process there than maybe some others. Uh, but I don't know. I think they're all, all over. Most cars are hand assembled, I think. I don't think too many robots are doing this. So cool stuff. Good looking car. Good looking car. I don't know how many they made of these. I don't know what they say. It's just an edition 64. There's a little box. Okay. Next, let's look at. Oh. So, this is the one we skipped over last time. So, let's look at that first. Let me get to the, the others. So, Power 164 from Paragon. This is the current generation FJ70, I believe, Land Cruiser. So, this is not the luxury version, but the utilitarian version out since the 80s with all sorts of different engines. Plenty of different engines. This is the white left-hand drive one because they make a right-hand drive too. Power 164 from Paragon. Very, very, very soft silicone-like tires. So they're very smooth rolling. And it's got a fairly good base detail. Not crazy. Plastic. But unlike the streetcar Paras does, the Par 64th line where there's no tire detail this has the tire detail so I was pleased with that and this is one of my favorite uh, 4x4's current 4x4's this FJ70 looks like the old school one and it's just awesome it's got the old Zuzu Trooper <laughs> back end look to it which is really sweet the asymmetrical door barn doors look at the detail on how they framed out the window so they put that paint on there but they did it crisply so it looks like that's door frame a little off the same because it's a pearl white versus a regular white toyota alloy wheels this truck can have a stick shift automatic have diesel and gas i think it's inline six or v6 v8 maybe and diesel three or six cylinder i think is what it is i can't remember i looked at the specs recently but but it has the snorkel so it's got the snorkel standard. It's got the hard plastic mirrors. So you got to watch those suckers. I busted one off. Can you tell? If you can tell, let me know. I can't tell too much. I have the right glue and patience. It's all you need <laughs> to repair it. So this is a cool truck. This is awesome. I really like this thing. Actually, these are so soft that you can't take too much of a corner because they'll kind of fall off the rim. So you got to... They hold on there pretty tight, but they seem to get a little out of whack sometimes. So, but it's a cool car, but you can't really have a pot car. You're gonna bust the entire window or the mirrors off, so it, it hasn't been too many places with me. Although I'd like to take it. All right, next, the last. We'll save the best to last, of course. So this is my first BM Creations BMC Chinese. Uh, manufacturer truck they make cars but I bought the Land Rovers and I got the red and the green and I, and they, and I go, of course got the left hand drive variant look at that just cool stuff so this is later in the first generation Range Rover's life and this can reflect the world vehicle because or North American vehicle because after 87 and it's not been that long. It's been in the States as an official brand. So Range Rover Land Rover start, stopped doing gray market imports and started doing having a dealership, you know, franchise going on and everything like that. So these kind of are like those later ones that went up until 1993 when the Series 2 94 came out. But also they had reason to kind of invest in the states because they were finally expanding the, the, the you know the, the lineup and they were you know introduced the discovery. They already had the 110 that they could sell here in the 90, so they kind of tried with those. Had this, and they had the discovery. So all those kind of trucks came over, and they were able to sell them. But this was kind of the last of the the first gen. Range Rover and that came out all the way back in 1969 and it was much more utilitarian vehicle it was almost like the the G500 Mercedes-Benz it started out as a pretty utilitarian vehicle vinyl seats basic interior no air conditioning that kind of thing um, and then they turned into 
pretty luxurious full leather interior full climate control you know high-end audio system full carpeting the whole thing um, but they at their heart was the same vehicle we're looking at now towards the end of its life and these really reflect kind of like 1990 kind of 89 88 that kind of like early late 80s early 90s version because they changed these a little bit further after they got into that 92 93 range but you can see the tri spokes are on these opening doors lens details the auto world tires fit on this really well but it kind of reduced the articulation and i think you know when you look at a stock one of these the tires were were good size but they weren't big fat ones either they're sort of narrow so i i kind of stuck with it they do my preferred method of having high end or very good detail on a 164 scale product is basically to cast this all in clear plastic and then paint the details in and that works superbly here there's a little bit that we can add here with black wash but we have full control of how these lenses sit in in relation to the body so it's a very good method to do a, a grill basically at this scale you can see how well the headlights look in the grill they can control the direction of the lines in the headlights where when you place a headlight in that's always crooked and in simple details like this where it's just a square they did the separate which even in this application doesn't look as even as when you're looking at that so and you even have the center of the lamp there you can see the bulb the tip of the bulb so it, it just looks really good it looks a little discombobulated when you see these pictures kind of from their press online retail photos when you actually look at it in person they did very very good job but the best part about these vehicles is that they have suspension and we're going to take one of these apart and i'll show you how that works if you're kind of miffed about it some people have alluded when they bought these at the ride heights kind of slanted it is you can see it's definitely raked and that's just the way they kind of designed everything but you're allowed to adjust it and we'll show you how i haven't painted the interiors but i'm going to do both of them in dark brown so they're going to have a dark tan interior i think the black looks a little plain there's a so much detail on this car that once i do the interior it's going to look like a 60 dollar car because <laughs> those high high end 164 scale cars can get very pricey so some of you keen eyes probably already figured out how this works but we'll go into it i did get a little aggressive on this when i was setting up the wheels because they did have a little bit of wobble i pulled it off um i had to glue it in there you can see the glue it didn't do too much actually bust it again so we'll have to fix that but basically they'll have the pins and they'll push the pins back with heat so they'll <clears throat> get those to stay in and then we have or suspension based off of basically the way the real one works is they have the four coil springs and then they have the track bars and that's the end of it you know they might have a sway bar and stuff but in a shock but that's pretty much it so this mimics the real one pretty well they hide the screw behind the pumpkin so you really don't notice the way the vehicle works from the outside it's very ingenious and it's actually very rugged so we can do this and have it work correctly we can go to the curb right here you can see how that works like a real vehicle it's just a lot of fun to play with especially when it looks so realistic but let's get the screwdriver real quick take a look and then we'll we'll wrap it up so they've had What's cool about this too, the Range Rover, is the fact that it is, and it carries a vehicle that Rover bought from General Motors, the Buick division, in the mid-60s. So the Rover V8 is really a derivative of the 215 all-aluminum Buick V8 that was produced with 16 valves, so it was an overhead valve pushrod design. So simple construction but back when there, everything was cast iron, the four-cylinder actually weighed more. The, the, the average four-cylinder in the European market, the British market, weighed more. And it was about 300 pounds, 315 pounds of aluminum engine. So you had a V8 
small displacement, make good horsepower in a very simple design. So after the, the teething problems, and it just didn't fit in the United States marketplace either, but it had some overheating issues, which they figured out. They only sold at General Motors about 1960 to 63. They made it almost almost 400,000 units of that engine in various vehicles. But really, the small Buicks and Oldsmobile and Pontiac products had a version of the 215 in it for all those years. But after the cooling issues and the fact that you could build cheaper V6s, inline sixes, four cylinders, V8s, and the demand wasn't there for a small economy V8, and they kind of moved on to other designs. It was kind of in the lame duck status, but people over at Rover needed a V8. They knew that a small V8 would work with their vehicles, and so they had a bit of a courtship of GM, and they finally was able to get the rights to produce the engine, and the rest is history because basically the Rover V8's been in a lot of British vehicles besides the, the Range Rover, but what a great choice. So a punchy little V8, originally carbureted, the vehicle in 69, first series Range Rover, stick shift, made about 120 horse. But over the years, they bored it out, they used the same design, and it basically lasted until 2004 in the Land Rover Discovery, I guess is what I was reading. But a bulk of them, you know, kind of were phased out in the 90s because it was just, there's a lot of vehicles out there that did much more performance than that V8 did, better fuel economy. So you can see the spring in there. They have it on the post and they glue it in. Very stiff spring. And then at the center of the axles there, towards the outer part, are two screws. And the screws are what's going to act on the bottom of that spring and then you have your suspension. Great design. Really, really cool. If you want to adjust your suspension height, you can back the screw out and it will lower the suspension. But it also will stick the screw out. So... If you're very picky, you can do one of two things. You can find a screw that's the perfect length, or you can take the existing screw and just grind it down. <laughs> it just depends how crazy you are. I kind of kept the screws the way they are. I did play with different screw lengths, but these are the ones I found that worked the best, which were the stock ones. And it does ride a little higher in the back, but it's not that bad once you start rolling it around. So I just love these things. They're really cool. One of my favorite SUVs to look at. I love the vehicle. I really want the two-door stick shift V8. I don't, <laughs> don't really care for the four-door as much, but it would be fun to have anyway because they are very cool. And they look very good, too. Who doesn't like a boxy SUV? So we looked at some vehicles while I put this back. Hope everybody enjoyed it. We're going to have more to come. I think we got some more deliveries coming so that we'll have some mail time. And then we'll be able to look at some more stuff. Bigger scales are going to come probably next. Maybe. If I can ever get my mind on which way I want to go. And what I need to do day to day. But boy, look at those things. They're cool. Hope everybody enjoyed the show. we got more cars coming. we got more cars here. We're just going to get to it. Hope everybody enjoyed it. Be well. Till next time.